What's up, everybody? It's so Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with your host, Comp, and Micron Pen. Today's film is They Live. You usually say the year. Go ahead. Oh, no, uh, 1988? They Live, 1988, directed by John Carpenter. A drifter discovers a pair of sunglasses that allow him to wake up to the fact that aliens have taken over the Earth, starring Roddy Piper, Roddy, Keith, Roddy David, Meg, what is wrong with Foster, <laughs> and a whole bunch of other people in this classic 1980s uh, science fiction slash horror film. Comedy. That, I mean, it's it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but nah, I'm just kidding, people. Uh, it's a super classic film. Like this is John Carpenter in his prime. I think this is one of his le- last '80s films. So um, this is really a culmination of his work coming towards that long road before he begin <laughs> before he worked no. on the masterpiece uh, Escape from L.A. Oof. Now, uh, Keith, uh, Keith David was uh, child in. Uh, the thing. Yeah, he specifically wrote the uh, John Carpenter wrote the character Frank specifically for him uh, for this film because okay. he remembered him. And uh, Keith David, if anybody knows, obviously Keith David, like you just said, his child's from the thing. Keith David is like a fucking awesome actor. That guy's uh, that guy's been yeah. in so much stuff. And so, uh, in fact, I saw I saw the Nice Guys yesterday, the movie uh, directed and written by Shane Black. Um, if anybody knows who that guy is. He wrote um, the Lethal That's Weapon like a comedy, films. right? Yeah, it's a comedy, but like a buddy cop film. But it's like really good. I mean, it's like you know how good the the Lethal Weapon movies were. Like they never got bad. Yeah. The Lethal Weapon movies, because right. that guy wrote all four of those movies, and then like uh, he also did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which has Val Kilmer and and Robert Downey Jr., which is a great movie. So and the, I, so this is like that level. This yeah, movie? yeah. I really, I really enjoyed the hell out of that film. And Keith David plays a heavy in that movie, like a bad guy in that movie. Uh, he's not okay. used that much, though, which is crazy enough. Like, because Keith David is like a really good actor, and everything you've seen him, and he has like this really awesome voice. He was the voice of Spawn in the HBO cartoon version of Spawn. He was, he was a lot of voices. In yeah, he's he was Goliath in um, uh, Gargoyles, the Disney cartoon. I never like oh, okay. I never liked watching that show, but I could appreciate you know that it had a following for some reason. I just didn't get into that show. Yeah, but it really did have like a big. Following. It had a huge, I but I, I really either. think that's that. I think like honestly that that show had a big following because of furries. You know, people that like to like get turned on by animals and <laughs> you talk about those people are a lot. Are you one of them? <laughs> Maybe uh, sometimes you just look at a dog and you're like, man, if that dog had a woman's body. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> Keith David is really, really good, and he's in here, and he plays Frank, who uh, is the buddy, of, well, sort of reluctant buddy, of Roddy Piper's main character, Nada. They never say uh, Roddy Piper's name yeah, you in find the film. That you find that on the ending credits, because Nada means nothing in Spanish. No. Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say... Um, <laughs> it sounded like you were chomping it, at the beat, like... Uh, uh. No, 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 there's... Um, I was a little confused. Did, like, John Carpenter write... The screenplay under the name Frank Armitage, which is the name of Keith David's character. Like, I was a little confused by that. Because it says screenplay, John Carpenter as Frank Armitage. Really? Okay, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess he did, right? I never noticed that before. I don't understand that. I wonder why he would, uh, yeah, I wonder why he would do it under a different name. Maybe because, listen, this movie is a very, this, this movie is frightening, (laughs) <laughs> well, it's very it's very political and it's also very campy and most of his stuff isn't well at least not the stuff that I know of him too much. Of uh, fr- uh, John Escape Carpenter, from New York is yeah, I guess Escape from New York is pretty campy. But I mean, this is this has like a comedy element that like a lot of his other movies don't have. Like it's like it's like purposefully silly, but also very political. I, I would know, think that I would different. think most of uh, John Carpenter's like I was about to say that this film has more in common with Escape from New York than it does The Thing. But I think they're all pretty. They all pretty pretty much have a political and sociological slant. All of his films this sort is, of this is this really is super political. political film. Yeah. And I'm usually yeah. I'm usually apolitical, so we might get into a little politics here. I'm gonna try to restrain Danny because myself, yeah, I'm gonna, I don't. I've already worked it out in my head. I'm not gonna go on a rant. <laughs> I myself um, am. Uh, I am. You know, in my in my private life, I'm political, but I don't. I'm not really somebody who pe- who preaches online unless I have discussions with my friends about stuff. And usually, I can really give a fuck about what anybody thinks about anything political. If right. I if I agree, I you know, or I disagree, you know that that's just 
just just how it is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go. I have friends that rant on Facebook about everything, oh, and you, which is <laughs> actually, you know, it's funny since I don't really see you you on my feed, so I guess I don't really. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad because I, okay. I no, I'm sure. Feel like oh man, I'm going overboard. No, I don't care. I actually, I actually vowed to stop like a couple weeks ago and just only care about art when it comes to social. Which is media. good. It's probably much more healthier because I think with politics, there's nothing. For the most part, you can really do unless you're part of a groundswell of something. You know, I'm not saying don't be political or don't or be apolitical or don't care. Yeah, but there's the, you get nothing out of you know. Being yeah, because you it. you basically stress your you dress yourself uh, stress yourself out on and especially online because uh, here's our like I guess our p uh, what is it the uh, not a pa is it a pa public announcement, public announcement about being too stressed and being so political online that you kind of alienate other people's like there's people let's say just yeah. for example also, I was, also it's very easy to lose your temper and say things you would never say to someone's face like i know people that i've known for years that i've gotten into like really kind of like harsh debates with that if right we were talking in person we'd just be like all right whatever you know like we wouldn't yeah, right, because there's no there's no tone and inflection in words when you write them on screen. I've had a lot of issues with that, just with women when I talk yeah. to them. They just think I'm like a, a, an unfeeling psycho, which is true. But you know, you gotta you know when you do it online politically, because I saw and it's funny enough. This is this person I'm talking about is not you actually right now that I'm about to say, but they okay. wrote a post on Facebook saying, "Oh, I just deleted all my friends who were a certain person's supporter." You can guess who it is. And then you don't. I'm not telling you oh. to guess this person. I'm saying the person that they're voting the for, is. right? So they're like, "Oh, uh, maybe I should." After this is all over, I can be friends with them again. And I'm like, "Did you really like just because politically you disagree with somebody, you have to delete?" Well, you can, <laughs> no, but in the defense of that person, I, in the defense of that person, <laughs> shut up. I'm not talking about you. I'm actually talking about somebody else, but I knew it would be like about you. I know who you're talking about. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that guy either. I'm talking about an actual different person that we don't know about. I know, like, we're being very... Well, in any case, if your political views are you're, like, a racist person... Right, yeah. yeah, I mean, it is... it is. When, yeah, it is when you see, like, how disheartening it becomes when you find out a person that you know is, it, it, it's a is completely of, if, ideologically different from you in a way that you can't get over that fact. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to bring this back into the movie with yes. my next statement, is that if you're, like, ignorant and, you know, like, you're choosing... if It's not a matter of, like, okay, if you actually are just, like, you don't know the information and you're just, like, ignorant to it, then I can be friends with you, even if you have completely opposite views, which is like the scene where they have a six-minute fight trying to make him wear sunglasses and right. he refuses they, to see. Like, he, yeah, this that is, a is film, real. Like, that's real. This is a film about social political issues. And, you know, it's funny, though, when I used... You know, I didn't get it until right now, just because I've seen this film in bits and pieces. I've seen the whole film, but in one of those things yeah. where I've seen him in all bits and pieces, where I've actually seen the whole film over and over and over, but only in parts... And, yeah. you know, all this time, until I saw it tonight, I thought those subliminal messages were for the aliens to keep an act up. Like, only the aliens oh. saw it. And then I realized, oh, no, no, that's subliminal messages for people. And I'm like, oh, whoops. <laughs> and I'm like, wouldn't they make them better sub- subliminal, like, words? But I guess not. I, you know you know how they usually have those well, they sexual get right ads? Well, the you know they have the sexual ads where like a, a ice cube looks like people having sex inside of a cup. I thought they would be much more classy, but I guess those aliens aren't very uh, creative at all. But anyway, they yeah. live is a very political and social commentary style film that Carpenter did in his reaction towards Reaganomics. Where I, I forced Danny through the his trickle down effect. Yeah, through his. Well uh, I forced Danny through his ADD to watch a little bit. Five minutes. Five minutes. And two minutes into it, Danny's like, do I have to watch this whole thing or do it? And I'm like, holy Christ, it's five minutes. I'm like, I'll call you back after. No, no, no. Let's stay on the phone. Do I have to watch? And I'm like, holy Christ almighty. Anyway. I have a short attention span. Yeah, that's true. So do I. But uh, anyway, so John Carpenter's film, how does it start out, Danny? Uh, it starts... How does it start? It out? starts out with Nada. Nada is a homeless oh yeah, man. he's a, a wander. He's not really homeless. He's just a well. A I think he, he sleeps on the street, so I think he's pretty homeless. I think that's the well. I mean, of it. I guess, but I would <laughs> I wouldn't use the word homeless because okay. it makes it seem like he's sitting on a curb collecting money. Like he's like 
a traveling hobo looking for work. Okay, very good. That seems more accurate to me. <laughs> okay, I think hobos are homeless, but that's fine. So not know, a, it's, it's a, a different whatever. To me, it's okay. very uh, frightening. This is where this takes place in, I think, Santa Fe. Santa Fe. So because one know. of the you don't know one of the, the train pulling into the station at the beginning says Santa Fe on it. So I assume it's a train coming into Santa Fe, and okay. um, uh, they live. I always wondered what that title meant because, I mean, and it is brought up twice in the film. It's done in the opening credits and, and you know, there's a thing that says, they live, we sleep. So basically these these aliens are living their lives while we're sort of working for them. Uh, at our expense. Under, at, our, at our expense. And the film is is John Carpenter's reaction to Reaganomics, and, um, which is super capitalism. And as John Carpenter said that, you know, once... You know, super capitalism means there's just more and more and more money being made from a top end and not on a bottom end where, you know, it sort of trickles down. Well, he said unrestrained capitalism. Right. That leads to depressions, um, which yeah. is very evident in this film. I don't know if Santa Fe had a huge um, homeless uh, problem or, you know, a, a working problem. I would think it would be Detroit because, you know, how Detroit basically, once they got rid of the car industry they destroyed livelihoods and it looks like fucking mad max beyond thunderdome there now uh without yeah. tina turner so that's not a very good thing and um funny enough that movie last night the nice guys had to deal with also people losing jobs in detroit so it's like i saw a twofer i saw keith david in two good movies and uh, not yeah. as basically uh working around looking for jobs um uh also a trip who, who john carpenter is voting for i i think i know I mean, he is, Holly, he is Hollywood, and Hollywood very very much is leftist, I would think. Um, well, yeah, he does but make that, money, that, right? term has, that term has become meaningless now. Well, that's true. Um, I, I, or libertarian, maybe. You know, I can't take a guess what his political leaning is. I would I, assume, well, I just mean, by I listening pre- to him... I think it's pretty clear from the movie what his yeah, political right. leanings are. Yeah, right. Just by listening yeah, to him in recent interviews, he did an episode... A very good episode of the Brett Easton Ellis podcast. The guy who wrote American Psycho has a podcast where he like releases infrequently episodes, and uh, he did an episode interviewing John Carpenter and their sort of reactions on things. And John Carpenter comes off as a very wise man to me, at least. And yeah, I, I think I would understand. That. I would think he'd probably look towards. I don't even want to name any pol- politicians in this episode, but uh, I think he would probably make a choice that I would be closer to. Um, anyway, so this town is, uh, y- there's a huge difference. We don't see really much of the rich side until the very end of the film. We see a lot of, you know, yeah. since we're dealing with Nada, he's in this sort of homeless camp, which reminds me of those sort of immigrant camps that are, hap- immigrant camps that are happening now in, uh, with all the refugees from Syria and Germany right now. Stuff like that. Right. Uh, although it doesn't really, this isn't really Ten about cities. an issue of... Yeah, this isn't a, an issue of, of uh, immigrants, although it is sort of an immigration film as well, but like the opposite way, like the invaders sort of thing. And uh, you yeah. know it's tough when there's a homeless Asian guy on a grill, because uh, I've never seen a <laughs> homeless Asian person unless it's in a kung fu comedy film. So uh, right. these people got it really rough. Anyway, Nada is, uh, meets up with Frank. How would you describe Frank's character? He is uh, untrusting and kind of pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I think I he's. Say. I think he's a little bit fed up with. It's funny because not his characters actually starts out as an optimist. I think he's sort of like you do your hard work, you know, you keep your nose yeah. clean, and he's, and very, he's it, very happy when uh, he's very happy to just totally flip a switch and start killing people. Well, right, he's got an idea of like uh, you do hard work, eventually good fortunes will come to you. Um, which is sort of Frank is in the same way. Frank is more like keep your nose down, get to work, and just you know accomplish what you have to accomplish so you can survive. That's his. Yeah. That's his thing. But Roddy Piper's character Nada, um, a situation happens where his eyes are open to a much bigger problem that is beyond his comprehension, which turns him into this sort of killing machine. And uh, uh, it's so funny because if you really think about it, it's like, like, who did he kill? Like, what were those aliens doing? Like, the worst that those aliens were doing were, and I'm not saying the scope of it because there's a much deeper scale of what these aliens are doing. If you don't, if you haven't seen the film, obviously, if you've seen the fucking yeah. film, because well, you're in that to us. particular scene, they weren't doing well. I mean, he killed a lot of ones that were trying to kill him, but right. he also, 
Right, and not all of them were necessarily... I, I mean, some of those cops were probably human that he killed. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think they see him on screen kill any humans in the film. Besides Holly, at the end, he doesn't kill any humans in the movie. Well, but we don't see... Right, true. Uh, but they, 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 they basically focus on the aliens getting splattered when he kills them. And even that one yeah. cop, that one cop that he lets go... Yeah, he, he lets him go, beat yeah. the street or beat your feet or whatever the fuck he says. But in that scene... Well, then again, that scene was like in the alien headquarters, so I guess That's actually true. there wouldn't be any humans. Um, but... It, I think um, it's funny because the, uh, the aliens obviously have this oppressive force where most of them are just, they're trying to terraform the earth, if I can gather that all together towards the end. They're terraforming the earth and kind of keeping the humans in this um, supplicant uh, sort of... They're, they're trying to spread democracy. That's what we call it. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're trickle-down em- economics, I guess. Um they're trying to they're trying to basically have humans on a leash while they're sucking out all they need from the world and then they move on to the next planet that's that's basically in the right. gist of it and i remember seeing even like cuz this film has some interesting world building in it it's not a lot of world building in it but it has enough small tiny like science fiction elements in it yeah, that yeah it's pretty cool like the portal yeah right the 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 sort of portal with the watch and then also that thing where the people are able to jump between planets and then they say oh it's right. light bending and I was like that's damn cool you know like so their news station is like on a like a space station or something right uh, I think is it Cable 54 I believe is the channel uh, yes. which is so funny because you'd think these fucking aliens which are geniuses and they're able to Use time, um, not time travel, um, space travel and dimension hopping and stuff like that. that. They could like they build a, a force field could, or something. They could have built a, a bulletproof casing for their And it's like a gigantic tiny little, little gun. But I think that's a statement, though. Like, yeah, that that's true. Gun, that, yeah, that they believe that people are so, you know. Sh- like a little man right. could do a lot. Or so, like one person could do a lot. I don't know. I'm looking into it. I know it's like a movie, but like. Yeah, it's there's. This I is a film, and it's everything. so funny because it's a, it's a it's a very scary film. Because to me, I think homelessness and just being un you know unsure of the future is is to me is much scarier than any horror film I've ever seen. That to me, that's the biggest yeah. scare I, I can have, and uh, that's that's in loads in this film because you're basically seeing these guys struggle to survive and they have to bust their ass. And luckily, you know, they're fortunate enough to get work you know like he, Nada finds a job at a construction site but you know it's still that sort of not being able to guarantee yourself work especially in this time you know this day and age you know a lot of work goes out of the country just to save these huge corporations money and yeah. you know especially well, like need, Danny and I the money Danny and I have such great you know uh, degrees in <laughs> design <laughs> it's, it's a scary the, life you know you have to get a real job the corporations the corporations need the money and they also need all of our taxes at the end of the year for their uh you know billion dollar tax cut subsidies of it's, course and then you they also need it <laughs> and then also you think about you know i mean just just having any insurance and control over your life it's just nothing truly is guaranteed until you actually go and get something done like Roddy Piper's character does. He goes and he, get, he yeah. fucking kills the shit out of people. I'm envious of him. I wish that... Uh, <laughs> Be careful. I wish this movie was real, like, so it could happen, like, at the end, like, how it happens. I would love to see the sequel. I'm trying... Yeah, I know. I always wonder, like, I think this would actually make an awesome... If they were to ever remake it, which they shouldn't anyway, but if this was, like, some sort of weird Netflix miniseries... You know right. they could. You you know they're able to stretch it out, but then they'll put some you know some fucking yeah, subplots. Yeah, they would of make it, but it would be. With... They'd make it, but it'd be uh, you know funded by uh, George uh, Soner or whatever that guy is. The guy, or the that, co- like, or the, co- uh, the Coke brothers. Or the Coke stuff brothers. Like that. Yeah, like it'd be funded by them, and it would have like subtle propaganda in there to make us think that they're the good guys or something. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, see, we're benefiting you guys. Uh, it's based on a short no- uh, story called Eight O'clock in the Morning by Ray Faraday Nelson, and I-, I didn't have enough time to look up what it is. It's on YouTube, so I think it's like a twelve-minute video that I guess somebody narrates. So I wish I could have read that before he did this episode, but I, I will after. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, I, and then it was also turned into a comic. I'm guessing book. it's very different from the way this movie. Uh, I, I, but sort of like. Um, Carpenter also based a lot of it on the a comic adaptation of the storyline, so maybe not. Um, 
So uh, uh, Epic Comics, which I think was an offshoot of Marvel Comics, made it. So I assume it was like in the seventies or eighties. I don't know when Epic Comics existed. Epic Comics were like the cool version of Marvel Comics. You know, when Marvel has like darker sort of like really independent sort of comics. If you ever look up Epic Comics on Marvel, they're really they're Marvel. They're really cool. Um, okay. uh, anybody else who had an offshoot of this, obviously. Um, Shepard Fairley owes his career basically to this film. He invent he uh, took the invented he took the obey phrase from this movie. So whenever you see mm-hmm. those Andre the Giant images with obey on it, he basically lifted that off of this film, and he should okay. pay fucking John Carpenter whoever the art direction was in this movie uh, a fucking uh, a, quarter, a quarter on uh, on a dollar for every time he used that shit. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, so not a is this hard-working guy he has to you know he has to eat shit to survive sort of uh deal and he strikes up a friendship with frank it's not it's an uneasy friendship they're just like two guys that uh it's questionable because you know uh you see roddy piper working shirtless and frank's like looking at him and then he starts talking to him so who knows maybe there was uh something no <laughs> He's fucking ripped. I know he's a wrestler, but it's... Yeah, it was so funny because here's the thing. Watching this movie, I still think Roddy Piper was probably the best actor that's ever come out of wrestling for me. I know people love The Rock, and he's fine. I love uh, The Rock, yeah. Although The Rock, uh, I was listening to The Rock's voice acting in that new... He's in some new Disney cartoon film, and he's actually very, Uh, like, very surprisingly good, but I've seen him in every other film. he's a good actor. He is a good actor. He's a good actor, but I think Roddy... uh, You know what it is? I think they played to Roddy's strengths in this film, and I still haven't seen a... Uh, a film that plays to uh, the rock strength. I could be wrong because I've only seen maybe two rock films. There's this one with uh, Stifler from American Pie. Oh, the, is it like... the Rundown or something like that? Yeah, I didn't the watch that. Like... <laughs> I saw it's actually the f- fun. The first movie I saw with the Rock was called Southland Tales, and it was the second movie directed by the guy who did Donnie Darko, uh, Richard oh, okay. Kelly. And Richard Kelly, Donnie Darko, to me was like a fucking an experience. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't know how you. Uh, interpreted I liked that it. film I lo- yeah you like I loved that movie when it came out because it was so it was such a mashup of genres so he, I was yeah. like I got to see what his next movie is he came out with Southland Tales and the rock was basically a main character and had one of the worst acting things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and I was like oh no so that always affected my idea of how the rock acts but he's a very good actor but I love Roddy Piper's work in this and uh, the worst actor I've ever seen is obviously uh, Hulk Hogan if you've ever seen Hulk Hogan right. acting in any film it's got to be the worst acting I've ever Super seen in Manny, my life. Bionic Commando. I saw Bionic Manny. Commando and I saw No Holes Barred. It, holy or Suburban shit. Commando. Suburban what did Commando. I say? Subhuman Bionic. Commando. Bionic. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Um, but holy crap, holy is he horrible in those movies. Uh, anyway, so um, he did good in a sex tape, though. He got $150 million or something. Oh, good million. for him. Good for him. And he destroyed the website for it. So anyway, Nat is going around in this encampment area, and there's all these, you know, uh, people that are not well off. They're uh, they're sort of they need. They, there's no. It's a community where these people all work together, and they, you know, feed. It's sort of like The Walking Dead. By the way, this movie is The Matrix before The Matrix. So this okay. movie, it is. I mean, isn't it like sort of wake up? But there's no kung fu. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, one, of, and I'm sure there's plenty of films like that where you know you got to wake up. But it's uh, there's such a, a strong, heavy social commentary in this film. It was so funny because you know how <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. If but they could they make were, those, what I was gonna say, if they could make those sunglasses. They should make them by the millions and just ship them out to people. I think they were because, I mean, you see them making those sunglasses. There's like a little laboratory where they're making these sunglasses. And they're driving them off at night, you know. I, I knew that they were getting raided before. They might have just been moving it from one safe house to another. Uh, right. But anyway, that's what piques uh, Roddy Piper's character's interest. Because they're they're sitting around an encampment. There's that one guy, the guy with the the sellout guy, you know, the one that's a homeless guy. I've seen oh, that guy. I hate him. I've seen him in other movies, but I'm trying to think of what other movies. Jo- or Judge is Drifter, what? George B- Buck Flower. He was in another Carpenter film because I remember seeing him. I've seen okay. him in a couple of '80s films. Um, George Buck Flower. He was in Back to the Future, The Fog. That based. guy like is such a salad, and he too. reminds me of a certain uh, a certain senator from um, you know the Northeast quadrant of America. I won't <laughs> say who. <laughs> He was in Pumpkinhead, Maniac Cops, Sorority Babes, and the Slime Bowl Bowlerama. Wow, that's pretty good. Berserker, Rigged, The Click, 
Starman. Oh, he was in a lot of Carpenter films. Yeah, Escape from New York. That's where I remembered him from too. But uh, yeah, he was cool. he's he plays a real scumbag in this film. I mean, he plays like a first like a homeless guy, and you're like, oh, he's just a regular scumbag. But then he's like a rich scumbag at the end. And uh, yeah, anyway, right. they're watching TV, and then there's this television set that just. I mean, they're watching a TV set. I don't know how they're getting this <laughs> this signal from beyond. Uh, I don't know what it's plugged into. Maybe it's plugged into a, 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 an electronic man's ass. But anyway, there's <laughs> there's this hacker that's screwing with um, cable. I guess everybody watches that channel, Cable 54, or whatever the fuck channel it was. And there's just this guy that appears on screen. And it's just, well, I mean, it's like an unsettling film. Like, the way that it's, the whole movie is shot, because there's a lot of, there's mostly wide angles than there are mm-hmm. close-ups and stuff like that. And I think that's, like, Carpenter's, let me see if it's Carpenter's, um, his longtime collaborator with his films. I'm telling you, once, like, Carpenter stopped, like, making quality films, like, uh, his films well, he made look a, really he made different. A lot. He did. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to take away from his, his, his work, obviously. But, uh, like, once... You know he's working on a Halloween Part 2, right? Or a new Halloween. I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> he's going to be working with the guys that... F- uh, I guess the guys that produced all the... Um, all those ghost movies that we watch. You know, the Conjuring and all those movies. You know those movies that right. they're, like... They make them for, like, $3 million. So, I, I'm sure he can make a Halloween movie for $3 million. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> a new Halloween's coming, oh boy! I'm sure John Carpenter's happy about that. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so Ga- Gary B. Kibb did the uh, the DP uh, cinematography. I don't think he's a, his longtime collaborator, but anyway, it's it's a really good looking film. And anyway, so this this yeah. TV, what what is going on with this uh, interruption, the satellite interruption? Well, I guess what that's, is this guy they're talking trying about? To, they're trying to wake people up, and it's being fuzzed out by the corrupt alien media it's basically exactly what's happening in this campaign <laughs> you think so like, yeah we're trying to say hey this is what's actually look there's rigging happening these numbers don't match up to the exit polls like there's yeah, all this corruption the, in nevada and they're like not covering it because like, we're gonna be vague because we don't want to deal with political bullshit well, i don't want to deal with political bullshit because i can care less what i don't know i could go on forever danny actually cares forever. because he gets upset and he has to leave facebook i'm like do you care <laughs> It's like this huge. There's like these quotes, like why? Why are you get cyber bullied? Like just close your eyes. <laughs> I was right. like, yeah, it's true. Like, do you really gonna you know who gives a shit? Like I'm and me and I'm a real sensitive guy for the most part. When people say shit to me, I'm like, oh, like well, in person. Moving on to the internet. That's like, right. That's true. It's like we're the more and more we uh, disappear from reality, we're you know we're our our avatars are like becoming the main focus of our lives, and that's how we get. Pretty you know, soon we're gonna like sit in chairs and download our brain that's why everything becomes like everything becomes like slut shaming or you know uh racism and stuff like that and people get so offended online and that's you know people think that the internet is much more important than it is in in terms yeah. of um opinions when everybody has an opinion they just have to sort of in real life we have to put on a, a sort of uh, uh an act you know i mean we're just to right. in the sake of keeping jobs and also you know for in genuine i mean in general trying to be nice to other people's feelings but online like i can't believe like you'll see things yeah i guess you don't have to and people have no idea of like they don't have any idea of consequences of what they say and you like people are saying you know people i followed on youtube have like canceled their youtube channels because somebody would like photoshop their head on like porn things and stuff like that and like harass them but i mean and just people in general on facebook writing you know just actually just super racist shit you know and you're like and yeah. then they get surprised they get fired because they're like, oh, free speech, free speech. It's like, yeah, you got free speech, but you're not free from consequences. You know what I mean? Like, your boss sees that you said, hey, kill all so-and-so type of people. They're going to fire yeah. your ass. And you're like, oh, it's free. No. I mean, you're going to be – and I, listen, I, I'm all for people saying whatever the fuck they want. I can, you know, you can't take that away yeah, from a person. Anybody can say whatever they want. Be smart about it. You know what I mean? They- because <laughs> we all have to be in this one stinking planet. Believe me, we could launch ourselves off of these planets we would a long time ago. Believe me. But uh, yeah. this film is very much so in that vein where it's like people's consequences of what they do. Like these guys wake up and they have to do something about it or they can just stay and be part of the machine. And, yeah. uh, you and, know. And Frank initially tries to do that by having a six minute long battle. With, <laughs> that's one of my favorite scenes. It's of great. All time. Yeah, it's great because it really is like a six minute long battle and uh, or five that's and a half amazing. minute long. Yeah, right. And, and it's it shows you the difference of a person who's awakened 
uh, I hate the phrase awoke because I'm not even sure if that's a, it is it was a real word, but I just hate using it in that term analogy. Yeah. And and he's he's awake. He's he sees this reality, but he's trying to. This is this is that six minute fight or five minute and a half or whatever long fight it is is so indicative of how people are who are sort of complacent in their lives and yeah. being you know shown the truth. And do you really want to see the truth? Because then you have a new sense of, or you have a new bunch of respons. You have a bunch of responsibilities now. You have to take co- uh, take uh, hold of because morally, you know, where do you stand on a on a subject like this? You know what I mean? Because it's like, mm-hmm. when, like we were talking about earlier, like when you're friends with people that are are leaning a political way. Now, how do you go back after it's over? You know, once the next step has happened, like how do you deal with the situation? I don't know. I, I've given up. And how trying. does like <laughs> how I've does society how does society deal with that? I know we're talking more political than we are about the film itself, but it's a very the film is so There's no well way to made. Not talk like this right, about the this film, film is so well done that it's it it launches these ideas to you, and it's and it's still relevant. The movie is so relevant because it's and the, the fight is so long, and it's I know it's supposed to be funny, and it's a joke. But it really is. Like I don't think that. it's like supposed trying, to be funny. I think to, it's just. Uh, I think it's actually. You know, it I is. I think it's doing. I think it's both. It's like being funny, right. but it's also making the point of like, all he has to do is just put on these fucking glasses, and it's like so hard to get him to right. do it. Like it's insane. I'm sure we were all like when I first saw it. I was like, why don't they just put on the fucking glasses? Like, what's his problem? And and um, but I think the way that it's done because originally it was supposed to be a short scene that. I think it does a lot in physicality than it does two guys arguing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what they did with them kicking each other's asses and getting exhausted was the equivalent of guys having a debate. I mean, but physically. And I thought it was right. it's so really well done watching it now. You know what I mean? You're just like, damn, like, you can appreciate this. And Nada is just like, the, the scene where Nada awakes with his, you know, putting on the sunglasses, because he was wondering why these cops raid this uh, church uh, that, you know, had been, you know, Yeah, he an thinks that the church is corrupt. So he pulls, he pulls out the box and he opens up, he looks in these glasses and he looks underneath the glasses, because he's like, what the fuck is this, glasses? Like, what, who cares? And then when he puts them on, I, I mean, it's like unintentional comedy. But like Roddy Piper's like reactions to everything is so funny because I can imagine not having <laughs> the same exact reactions. Like the part when he sees the guy at the newsstand, and he looks like a skeleton. You're like, holy shit! I remember this, it creeped the hell out of me when I first saw this film as a kid. Yeah. And um, all that <laughs> stuff is sort of like unintentional comedy because, but I think that's just something that you know. I mean, it's you see something that you've never experienced before. You're gonna have a reaction like, what is going on with reality right now? This movie actually is so good. It's like, very you know, good. I mean, like, I mean, it's so silly and campy, but it's so good and so meaningful. It's that's why it's sort of like pointless for us to discuss the film itself without getting into its uh, higher reaching sort of, you know, meanings. And the fact that that it's still relevant shows you how how scary this it's world can be. Than it's more ever. relevant than yeah than ever. And uh, I gotta wonder. I just just because there's a sequence where Holly, you know, when um, Nada kidnaps Holly and he goes to her house, and there's these two yeah. um, gay men that are talking. To, they're just saying, "Oh hi," you know, and they get uh, offended because they just sort of walk into the apartment. And I'm telling right. you, I'm thinking <laughs> one of the guys is modeled after. I swear to you, I think he's modeled after Lou Albano because he has I don't like know a who that is. Captain Lou Albano, of Super Mario Brothers Super Show, the big fat guy from the you know, because oh. the guy's like has a, has a Hawaiian shirt and it's open and he has long hair and I was like that has to be like a guy like Roddy Piper must have <laughs> said fuck Lou Albano but maybe I'm just you know they both had a Hawaiian shirt so who knows I would never see I can't imagine a real gay man ever wearing a Hawaiian shirt just because were they were they a couple are, I didn't even oh yes that. oh yes oh yes go watch that scene because they're like the oh, one okay. guy does a pithy like huh when he walks around so I think it's uh, stereotypically gay but at least it was nice it was a positive you know positive look on gay men. And uh, anyway, Holly. Holly is a character who Carpenter says is a middle class woman who's sort of sucked into it. And I remember just hating Holly with a pat. I mean, it's rightfully her so eyes to hate are so her. Crazy. You know who she is? She was the main uh, evil witch from the Lords of Salem. You know the one with that oh, fantastic okay. voice. I mean, time was not, or I hope that was makeup, but she she was frightening in that movie <laughs> like i mean her voice because she sort of has that you know that kirstie alley has that smoky cigarette voice you know women have yeah, that right. deeper voice 
she, her voice in the the Lords of Salem is probably one of the best voices I've ever heard. And she like she's like legitimately unsettling as a person in that movie. And I totally watched Lord, I, Danny didn't like it that much. I loved that. That was like my favorite movie that year. <laughs> but uh, she's she is such an asshole in this movie just for what she does yeah. because she is a she is a supposed good guy and not a like like falls in love with her for some reason or he just he he uh warms up to her and the way she just takes out keith david i was like fuck I mean, she just shoots yeah, him in his head. nicely enough though that she just sort of did it without him having to suffer she could have just shot him in his leg you know what i mean but she yeah, shot but him right in his head lo- and her killed logic him. for it is like so frustrating you know yeah uh and because she like knows exactly what these people are she's not siding with them but she's stopping other people from stopping them yeah that's and that's politically something that's just happened i don't want to get into this recently but there was somebody that knew was somebody somebody knew and i'm sure danny knows what i'm talking about somebody knew that their significant other was going to do something really horrible and they didn't say anything about it and the guy carried out what he was going to do oh are you talking about the, what yeah that happened? piece yeah. of shit and uh now yeah. she's being looked into and you know that just shows you you know what I mean? people if they don't do anything fucking horrible and i'm and i'm sorry to bring yeah. that up i'm being very vague about it but it's it's weird to bring that up for a film like this but it shows you even the slightest you know um thing that you can do to save people fucking yeah. do it basically you know I mean? if you uh i read a quote if you see oppression and don't do anything about it you are an part of the problem right yeah yeah because yeah. And that's why I'm sure Keith David, once he woke up, he thought immediately about his wife and his kids who he hadn't seen in six months. You know, he was like, fuck, there's something bigger going on. You know, it's about self-preservation with this film. And I wonder if his if his wife could have been one of them. I was wondering that, actually. You know, it'd be, it'd be interesting if, like, because you, you do see in the... Because the movie does end on a comical note. Uh, yeah. There's two mo- two movies to me that are, like, sort of science fiction or slash horror that end with like very comedic sort of funny um what do they call that rim shots you know at the end what's of the, the other one to me it was cabin fever might have the best joke f- ever of all time because it's so incredibly stupid um i don't i won't repeat what that joke is because it's a pretty offensive joke but it's like okay and this one as well with you know the lady having sex with an alien man which shows i guess they can pro uh, procreate or crossbreed into uh, interspecies or something like that but for some yeah. reason <laughs> i always thought that it was because i always watched it on tv and of course they cut a lot of shit out like they obviously when they showed the lady's breast they zoomed in so you just see like from the top of her shoulders <laughs> and i always thought the voice was a much more like stereotypical black guy's voice for some reason and i heard it, i was like oh it sounds like a white guy doing it instead and i don't know why i thought that but um right. anyway uh i going back to that fight between uh nada and frank i loved how like he breaks the back of the windshield and he apologizes and then yeah, right. and then frank goes to break a, a bottle to hit him with it and then the whole bottle just destroys and he's and roddy piper starts laughing and i thought that was like so fucking cool like i, I just everything about this movie like just fucking carpenter nailed it so hard i mean it was just like it, it's like there's no fuck-ups in this movie to me the only thing that bothered me was that yeah. the um i understood like the shades being gray like everything being black and white just so you can have this sort of stylized difference but right. I couldn't imagine because remember they had to wear contact lenses at the end, and the contact lenses were fucking gr- black and white as well. Like uh, that yeah. drove me nuts because I wouldn't. Could you imagine having to walk and everything looks like a noir f- film? Like it would just drive me nuts walking around and everything's black and white. But I guess you know you'd rather have that well, and have, see the truth than yeah, yeah. I guess you would rather see the truth than you know just imagine what the fuck. I they mean look that like. truth is still there whether you see it or not. So yeah, might as well also. See it. Also, the the PKE meter from Ghostbusters shows up about three times in this film. You know, the one that Egon uses yeah, to track Yeah, was it the ghosts. same? Was it yeah, the it was the thing? exact same one. And, and it's actually showed up in a couple of films. Uh, huh. it showed, <laughs> I don't know why. I guess it has just certain props. I remember re- hearing about it a long, t- uh, long time ago. Uh, at, like, they just reused shit in films. Like, ten, uh, yeah, PKE uh, showed up in Knight Rider and Suburban Commando. So there you go. It's going back in huh. a circle. Um, do you have any uh, final notes on what you thought about this film? Um, at the end, when they destroyed and everybody can see what they are, 
I think that that's actually happening in our society now, thanks to social media, which I hate social media, but it really is making that happen. You think that the people are being exposed? I really, I really, truly I mean, can't understand how there people... can't be the candidate that's running against the other candidates right now without the idea of people being awakened because we know things that are being covered up by our media because it's all owned by like six friggin rich people right that, and it's so. so weird because I, I, it's just something that i can't comprehend it's like stuff like when a character let's say they change the race of a character for a film that was different in a book and then mm -hmm. you just see like multiple like Oh, they're they're black. I can't, you know, I can't stand. It's like, you know, people can see this, right? Like, uh, you know, people can read this. Like, do you want to? This is wait, why. What do you mean, like how the ghost? Like, like there was a thing with Hunger Games. There was a thing with Hunger Games where they a character who was, I believe, was black in the books. She was black in the film, but everybody who read the books thought she was white for some strange reason. Uh, I forgot even the race of the character, and there were people. Oh, I don't like this character anymore because they're black. Oh right. And I was like, right. I'm like. I mean, you have an opinion, that but... That goes... Yeah, if it what, says... What's wrong with you? Like, what, what the fuck do you give a shit? You know what I mean? It's just like... And it I depends it's always if it's relevant be... to the story, but <laughs> right. most of the time... Most of the time, that's stupid. Like, there's examples I could think of where it actually does ruin plots of the story. Like, in Dark Tower, it, like... There's a whole racial storyline. Yeah, that's that because the other character who has an issue with him is herself African-American. I don't care anymore, because I think Idris Elba's... Uh, a good actor, but Danny's just racist. I just, I, anyway, I just think that it, so, uh, it ruins a whole plot line. But <laughs> if you have a character, if you have like Harry Potter, it makes no difference what race he is to the story. So make him uh, like a Chinese man. I don't care. Like I guess you, if you guys, and thing. if you, uh, and I'm looking right now on, um, I'm looking at a webcam of Danny, and he was hailing Hitler while he said that. So it's yeah, very no, I was, I was, I was using my <laughs> thumbnail to carve a swastika <laughs> into my forehead. No, no, no. We love all races, right, Danny? Anyway, I do. Oh, we love you all. Except for... <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. So, um, anyway, yeah, so there's... A, it, I just can't understand how people... I mean, I can understand because there's always going to be racism. There's always going to be stupid shit in the world. There always is, but I can't understand you saying it in public because people always... And, I, and this film is well, a very a certain, good indicator about a it. a certain other... Uh, person running has given these people oh, yes. yeah, the yeah. confidence they need to be able to do that. Yeah, there's now. a false, there's a false sense of oh, I don't have to be politically correct, so I can say whatever I want, yeah. which is fine. You can do that, but be real, you you're, know, realize there's there's other people that, that uh, <laughs> do stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's enough of our poli that's probably this is probably our most political episode, even though we were very vague on everything. Um, yeah. With that, Danny, what rating would you give this film? I'm going to give this movie uh, like a 10 out of 10. Yep. Um, 10 out of 10, uh, having sex with Damn. a scary skull. Oh, you, do you no, want no, that's all right. Go ahead. Having sex with a scary skull alien, like, and then, you know, totally fine, and then looking down and seeing his true identity and. He says a, a witty one liner and then cut the credits. I just also want to say I'm so happy after how many episodes we've done that Danny actually picked a good film. I'd give this movie what? a 10 out of 10. Getting shot multiple times by a guy in a helicopter, but you still get to give him the finger, which is great. So with that, <laughs> Danny, what's the final word? Net weight, 8 ounces. Deconstruction.